This is the newest offering from Lab 599, the TX500 MP, HF plus six meter radio. Just pick this up. We're going to talk about it today. All right, from Lab 599, TX500 MP. This is the one that I was talking about in my video when I did my video about the TX1000 that they announced a while back. If you go to Lab 599's website, they, talk, they, they announced a new radio. And I did a video about it, and I was like, but nobody's seen this radio yet. They announced this radio like last year, year and a half ago, some, something like that. And they had a link to the Desert Wireless website for where to purchase this radio, but it wasn't there. In fact, at the time of this recording, it's still not there. Okay, this is where I got it. I got this radio from Desert Wireless. Okay, I bought it. I paid full price for it. This is all, on, if we go to all on here, click on all. Has all this stuff down here, and then click on transceivers, and it they have the original five uh, TX five hundred right there, and they have a couple of Sun SDR Expert Electronics radios right there, but no TX five hundred MP. So for whatever reason, they decide to take the radio off of the website when it's out of stock. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that's how they do it. So I had emailed them shortly after, because Julian, OH8STN, he started making videos about this radio a while back, a few months ago. So I'm like, I know it's out, and I got a couple of comments from you guys in the TX1000 video saying, oh yeah, it's out, it's out, you, you can buy it from Desert Wireless, it's out. And I'm like, dude, it's not on the, their website, how are you buying it from them? So Robert, W5ITR, put a feeler out on their website and said, change you know, send me an email notification when something new appears on this website or something, kind of did his own thing. And when we were on our Colorado trip in July of 2025, he got an email notification. So he went and bought one and I'm like, okay, go ahead and buy me one too. I was driving at the time, handing my credit card. So, so far, no fraudulent charges from Robert on the credit card. So I think he's a pretty good guy. <laughs> but I picked this up, got uh, got an email from them the next day. They said it would ship in, uh, in 24 hours. It actually took about three days to ship. Got here in a, just a couple more days after that. So everything's good. Looking forward to trying this out. I'm going to take this to Galveston next month when we're down there for the Labor Day weekend. But today, we're going to kind of look at it and see what all it's about. I'm going to go through the menus on it. This is basically, from what I've seen so far, this is the same radio as the original TX500. It's just instead of having the screen horizontally here, it has the screen 90 degrees rotated here, so you set it up like this. And then the battery is built into it. This Lab 599 battery is built into it. This thing has a kickstand right here. You can kickstand it out like that, and you can set it on the desk like that. Turn the battery on right there. We give a power indicator light right there, and it is USB-C rechargeable. The port for the USB-C is right here. You can actually get, it doesn't come with, it comes with a, a nice USB-C cable. But you can also charge it via barrel connector. It does not come with a barrel connector, but it does come with the USB-C cable. I just charged mine via USB-C cable and charged it from my Gigaparts battery box with the 65-watt PD port. Charged it up just fine. It was about probably three-quarters of the charge when I got it, so it wasn't that far down. But I plugged it in, charged it up, let it go overnight, and put it back together and got it ready for the video to make today. So let's go through the menu on this thing. First, a couple of things about the radio itself. MP stands for Man Pack. The TX500 Man Pack, MP Man Pack, is a compact, portable HF and 6-meter radio. On the box and on the um, on the manual, I'll show you the manual here in a minute. On the manual here, it says HF slash VHF L, so VHF low band. I was wondering if it had 2 meters, but it does not. It has HF and 6 meters. So right here, portable HF and 6-meter QRP transceiver designed for rugged field-based amateur radio operations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Frequency coverage is 0 0.5 to 56 megahertz, so it goes a little bit past the 6-meter band. It transmits from 1 to 30 megahertz with a tuner and 45 to 56 megahertz. I'm not sure if it has an internal tuner or not. Oh, you know what? I need to keep reading. Built-in automatic ATU. There we go. So the TX500 did not have an ATU. Okay, now, for those of us using NFED half waves and resonant antennas, that doesn't really matter. My newest antenna that I really like using on my POTA activations is that uh, Little Pro HP 750 watts on sideband Tar Heel antenna. I've had very good success with that antenna. You tune it to whatever band you want. Uh, it's got an electronic motor on it. Just plug it into your battery and use the toggle switch to go up and down with the coil. It works great. So I don't typically care about 
whether a radio has an ATU because I tend to use resonant antennas. But I know some people want to use a random wire or they want to be able to tune down a little bit farther, and that's okay. So, But this one does have a built-in ATU. It supports all modes, single sideband, CW, digital modes like FT8, JS8, call in WinLink. Okay, low power consumption, up to 100 milliamps in receive mode, enabling extended battery life with the BP550 battery pack. That's the battery pack that's built on the back of this right here. Three watt nominal external, uh, nominal for external speaker. I'm going to talk more about the external speaker here in a minute. Digital mode support compatible with interfaces like the Link 500 MP. We had Oliver and Ed on a live stream a while back to talk about the Link 500 for the original TX500 radio. They've got a Link 500 specifically for this model that sits on top of the radio right now too. So maybe they'll be kind enough to send me one of these one of days and we'll have them on a live stream again. But right now I don't have that. The form factor is man pack designed. It weighs about 1.8 kilograms with the battery pack and cells. Compact and rugged, rugged aviation grade aluminum alloy housing. Engineered for harsh conditions, high contrast, sunlit, readable monochrome LCD display. I have not had this thing out in really bright sunlight yet, but you can tell by looking at it, it's gonna, it should be pretty easy to read in the sun. Improved wire management, connectors consolidated to one side. Yep, we're going to look at that here in a minute. Connectors is the GX 12 millimeter connectors for watertight connections, standard BNC and connect antenna connector. No built-in speaker. It does not have a built-in speaker. It, it comes with this speaker microphone. I'll show you that in a minute, but it does not have a built-in speaker. Enhancements over the TX500. Wire management, man pack design, digital interface, optional Link 500 MP. Now, they have a Link 500 for the original TX500 as well. Okay, they got a couple versions of it, actually. They've got one where you, you take the battery and the 60-watt uh, amplifier and put them all in like this 3D printed case. The Link 500 kind of fits nicely in there to where you don't have a bunch of cords running everywhere. So they have that option available for the TX500. So I wouldn't say that that's something this radio has over that one. But it does have a built-in ATU, unlike the original TX500, for easier antenna matching. Okay, good. Limitations and considerations. No full break-in QSK. Like the TX500, it may have a minimum of 100 milliseconds recovery time in CW mode, limiting high-speed CW operation. No VFO knobs. Took me a minute to figure out how to do VFO on this radio. Going to show you that in a minute. External audio dependency. No built-in speaker. Relies on speaker mod or internal audio. Yeah, I, I thought that was a drawback too. Limited information. Some features like spectrum display and USB-C integration are not fully detailed as of the latest updates. We're going to take this thing... The, uh, this is a pretty good quick start guide right here. I read through this. I had, I had to consult this quick start guide to figure out how to do a couple of things in it because it was not blatantly obvious how to get into some menus, how to get into some modes. Battery to turn off by itself if you don't use it for a while. So there's the display right there. So we've got uh, the mic speaker port up here, data port, and the antenna port right there. So on the top of the radio, it's got these funkified connectors like the old one had this is a straight BNC. actually this is a this is a type n connector right here they say, it says bnc on the paperwork but it's not this is a type n connector and these two ports are, have different pin, a different number of pins in them so you can't put one in the other this is the data port which goes right here but you can't put it in the speaker mic because the number of pins is different likewise the speaker microphone the end of the speaker microphone here has this a, a certain number of pins, just like that. So you can't intermatch the two. I like that. It makes it, it makes it a little bit more proprietary so you can't plug stuff into the wrong place. Yeah, this Type-N connector is a little strange for an HF radio, but that's what it is. It's a Type-N connector. Okay. This is obviously the power button right here. These are function knob, function one, two, and three. That's the menu. Left, right, up, down. And these are three, channel zero, channel one, and channel two. You can custom program those channels. So if you want to always be able to get back to uh, 14074, which of course is the FT8 frequency for 20 meters, you can do that. Or you want to program something else in there, program a six meter repeater, or it does have CTCSS. I'll show you that in a second. So in order to get into the menu, so we got menu there and it shows you some stuff down at the bottom of the screen. Zero, zero power is what that one says right there. And we can page through the menu with these left, right keys. Zero, zero is where it starts. 01 is RF is CW. 02 is mic gain. You page through the menus, 4, 5, 6, 7, compression enabled. If you want to change that, compression is enabled right now. If you want to change it, you hit the up, down arrows. You can disable that. You can re-enable that however you want to. Press menu to get out of it, like there. 
and then it goes all the way up to starts at zero zero and it goes all the way up to 36 cat control ts2000 cat protocol rather ts2000 interesting it says cat protocol ts2000 so but that's the menu right there hit menu to get back out of it and then along the bottom here it says volume frequency and tune right there so you got your tuner right there but you can page this sub menu also if you push left right it changes these bottom three options here so now it says filter preamp and mode if we go into mode we're in digital mode right there over on the left you can see and if we go into mode it highlights the mode and then you can change the mode cwr am fm upper sideband lower sideband cw regular cwr back to digital so that's how you do that so you would change that come back out of that go back over to the right again we've got squelch channel and battery on that menu there and then we've got uh, mag one and mag two I, I haven't figured out what the mag one and mag two there's some relay you can hear clicking in the radio when you click on mag one and mag two i didn't look that up in the manual so i'm not sure exactly what that does yet but and then you can lock the screen if you want to you can lock the screen there unlock it with another one and of course that's your tune button right there so it's got all of that stuff in the menus and it's got this menu that constantly stays up and then I, in order to go into the deep menu for uh, more detailed settings you just click on the menu button and go right there however you want to key beep is enabled so you can't hear anything right now because there's no speaker plugged into it that I, that is a drawback to it in my opinion it is a drawback that it does not have a speaker built into the radio so we have to go here and now now i can hear it but i'm going to plug in there we go now we can really hear it there's no intent there was no antenna plugged in so i'm plugging in antenna i've got a monstrosity here because i went from type in on the radio to bnc bnc to so239 and then my coax here with the so239 connector now for this video and when i take this into the field i will be using Mezzi and Poloni coax. This is the Mezzi and Poloni coax Sahara edition coax. You can always save a 10% discount on everything from Mezzi and Poloni with the coupon code of HR2Cables at the Gigaparts link in the description below. They're sponsoring this video when I take this thing out to the field at Labor Day and hopefully do a POTA activation with it. Maybe I'll do FT8 POTA activation with it. But uh, I don't know about using QRP. I'm just not a big QRP guy. But when I connect this to an antenna, I will be using Mezzi and Poloni coax. So check out the link in the description below. And thank you, Mezzi and Poloni, for supporting the channel. So now we've got this plugged up. And we're going to page over here to the, this menu that says volume right there. Volume menu right there. So we click on that. And then we can turn. And the volume meter is this bottom meter right here. This is your S meter. The top meter is the S meter. The bottom meter is the volume meter. So you can hear that. There's FT8 activity going on right now on the 20 meter band with the external antenna connected. Just the band. It's just the band. It's not a radio thing. This is just how the band is. But the band is just not up right now at all. It also comes with this comes with this cable right here that plugs into the data port. Actually, this guy right here, this guy right here plugs into the data port on the radio. This is the, this is how many pins are on the data port on the radio. So this goes in the middle of the radio right here, just like that. Out of this comes an external speaker plug. So this data port has three items coming out of it. One, look, this looks like an external speaker plug, but it might be for, um, that might be for USB interface. I'm not sure. It has this plug on it, which is where this plugs in. So in order to interface USB, you have to go through this plug on the radio into this external plug here, into this barrel connector, or this, uh, yeah, this barrel connector and a USB-A connector. The third part that comes out of the top of the data cable is this red and black cable. And this has, I'm not sure exactly what this is for, honestly. The, this is the way it came. It came with this cable here. So this goes into the data cable of the radio. And then it's got three options. This is a USB interface option. This is, it, it's not marked, but it's, I'm sure it's probably in the manual, but I thought that that was strange because it's almost like it could run on external power. Maybe that is what it's for. Maybe it's to run on external power. If you don't want to use the internal battery, you can use external power, connect that to your power. That makes sense. I don't know how you would interface it with the amplifier if you wanted to get more than 10 watts out of it. 
kind of a weird contraption, but this gets around the original TX500, which had three ports on one side and three ports on the other side. So you have this monstrosity looking Borg thing that would come out of it. So that cleans it up a little bit, puts it a little bit more, makes it a little bit more user friendly. You just got to deal with this one set of triple cables going into the data port there and then a type in connector on the top for some reason but that is the tx 500 mp and i'm looking forward to using this quite frankly i i think it's it's definitely very compact it's definitely compact it is more portable than its predecessor because you don't have to add a lot of it, you just don't have to add as much stuff to it it's got an internal tuner which the original TX500 did not have. So what do you guys think? I'll put a link down below in the description for Desert Wireless. One quick thing about Desert Wireless. After I did that TX1000 video, and some of the new coffee I have on my website. After I did that TX1000 video, people commented in that video saying, yeah, it's on the Desert Wireless website. They just don't list it when it's out of stock. Why not? Just list it and say out of stock. So I emailed Desert Wireless and I said, hey, look, Here's my YouTube channel. I'm not asking you for anything. I want to buy a radio when you have it back in stock. Can you let me know when you think that might be, or can you let me know when they come back in? And silence, nothing. No response at all. So not real sure about their customer service. Well, they could have responded and said, no, we don't have a way to do that. Thanks for looking. Okay, at least that would have been a response. But after ordering it, they shipped it very quickly. I, ha I had it in less than a week from the time I ordered it. To the time it was delivered, I had it in less than a week. So very fast shipping. It was in stock. I bought it. They shipped it. Everything's good. The packaging was good. No problems there. But I'm looking forward to using this in the field, seeing what it sounds like, seeing what kind of FT8 we can do with it. I might try to do a couple of sideband contacts on 10 watts. Let me know what you think about this. Check the links in the description below. 73 guys. Thanks for watching.